Hi, everyone. Very good afternoon. Um, welcome to our first series uh, together with uh, Servius. I have with me uh, Yap Wu uh, a very talented young lady, uh, specialist in uh, commercial market. More importantly, um, some time back in uh, September 2020, uh, Servius and Hutton's uh, strengthen their position by combining the uh, residential forces. Uh, it's about half a year now, and this is the first of its kind series that I have gotten an expert, you know, who is here uh, to have a live interview. What makes her so special uh, in today's market? I'm sure you have read uh, reports here and there. Uh, just to give you a bit of insight into uh, Huyi profile. Um, I think she showed the next screen that this uh, beautiful face, Yap Huyi, Shop House Specialist, some of the record transaction that she has done. And uh, in today's newspaper, um, she has, uh, I think Service is the agency that's being chosen to market uh, mm. Pago Pagoda Street, yes. uh, the two commercial shop houses. Correct. Uh, how, how did you get this? Uh, appointment. Yeah. Uh, well, it wasn't easy to clinch this appointment, to be honest, Mark, um, mm. because the owner mm. is a local family. Mm. Uh, they own quite a number of shop houses in Singapore. They are mm. very savvy. Mm. So they actually invited six agencies mm. to come and present to them, mm. you know, share with them uh, our track records, you know, our view in terms of the market, how we can actually uh, help them to. Mm to market the property. Mm, mm. So uh, we actually ran a beauty parade mm, and uh, mm. quite blessed that uh, we were chosen uh, based mm. on our track records and our confidence in terms of getting the highest and best price for the seller. Mm, yeah. mm. You see, mm. um, who we come across to me that um, she has been in this market for about 10 years. Yep. 10 years, right? Uh, she started off with after graduation from NUS in the real estate discipline. Uh, she went on to Amon and Thai. Yes. And then after that, CBRE. Yep. And then for the last three years, uh, BRB Service. Yes. And during the last three years, she has broken many deals, um, including the one, um, I think one of the big deals that was a couple of months back, Temsu. Uh, yes. You know, Temsu? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's yeah, a that private was about collective sale. 800 yep. over million yep. on the uh, purchase land size. You know, look, looking at, at this track record that you have, that you know, how, how do the customer or the prospect, the seller, uh, reach out to you? Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I would also like to give the credits to uh, the team members. I think for most of the projects that we do, mm. we always work as a team. When we go and mm. hunt, we go and hunt together. Mm. Yeah, so uh, what, we do, how, what we did differently as compared to our competitors, I would say it's... Uh, we always remind ourselves to provide dedicated services to clients. Mm. You know, we always place our clients' interests ahead of ours. Mm. But you know, having said this, yes. everybody put, mm. you know, everybody will say that I give my best, I give dedicated uh. interest. Uh. How do you define, <laughs> uh. you know, by uh. doing better than the rest, uh. the dedication? Okay. Um, maybe to put it this way, every time I take on a project, right, I, I don't take the usual route to sell the property. You know, mm. I will always sit down, clear my mind, really think of, you know, for this kind of property, this kind of asset class, what would be the buyers who can offer the highest and best price for my client, for my seller? Mm. You know, in order to do this, I really have to leave no stone unturned. Mm. You know, I talk to different kind of uh, buyers, agents, referrals, middlemen, mm. you know. Mm. Uh, I work very closely with a lot of external agents, uh, Hutton's agents as well. A mm. lot of the Hutton's agents, you know, mm. they have the clientele. You know, they will always uh, bring their clients to me and mm. uh, I'll be there to do presentation then we close deal together. Mm. Other than that, I work very closely with a few private bankers, mm. uh, lawyers as well. Mm. You know, some of the family office lawyers, um, they are helping the mm. foreigners coming to set up family office. Mm. That's when, you know, they will refer their clients to me. Mm. Yeah. So I don't just restrict myself in doing all the conventional, traditional kind of uh, strategy, mm. you know, just put it up on advertisement. Uh, you know, just mm. put it out on commercial guru. Mm. Uh, I always have to really think out of the box mm. in terms of what kind of uh, avenue or channels that mm. I can do to reach out to the widest pool of buyer. Mm. Yeah. But but I'm sure that in today's market, there are many mm. uh, people like yourself uh, dabble into this commercial market. Mm. But uh, for the last two years, mm. you know, your name keep um, 
servicing you know yeah. every now and then you know in today's market that you've broken the most deal uh, in fact service has one of the highest record of trans transaction mm. in the commercial segment yeah. and your name is being surfaced over and over again mm. you know how how did you promote yourself you must have done something to yourself mm. that this prospect uh, or sellers come to you mm. well uh, I, I would say it's a few years of experience now it, it mm. doesn't just come like with a snap of finger mm. I think uh, we, we started off um, few years ago probably about seven eight years ago mm. where people didn't really believe in shop house mm. you know, um, a lot of the shop houses were quite dilapidated mm. people don't see the value in shop house mm. uh, that's when we started entering into the market you mm. know uh, really try to understand this asset class because mm. it's such a niche market mm. right uh, we believe in what we are selling you mm. know uh, we, we don't just sell like you know it's brick and mortar everyone can see mm. but it's mm. always about the potential mm. and the value add that you can do on the property mm. that most buyers probably when they were new to the market mm. they couldn't think mm. of that's mm. when we really went in mm. you know uh, from different angles mm. and uh, after we close a few deals that's how you know the deal mm. flows keep coming in keep coming yes so yeah. so at this current uh, you know juncture yes. what is your daily routine do you still do the very <laughs> traditional way uh, you know yeah. go to shop houses uh, uh, sh you know hand out mailers yeah. do yeah. you still do that I mean you have been uh, you are so successful <laughs> now do you still yeah. go uh, down to the street to uh, do that uh, I still do I mean my, my, our team still do that I mm. guess uh, that's one of the most conventional ways to reach out to mm. to, to owners la. Mm. I mean uh, that's definitely one way for mm. us uh, to reach out to owners I mean, other than that, it's really, you know, from a day-to-day -day basis, like I mentioned earlier, really have to constantly speak to different kinds of, uh, you know, mm. people in mm. the market. That can you know, refer sure. this, this mm. group of uh, prospect to you, the mm. bankers, yep. the lawyers, yes. and then also through means of distribution of flyers, mm. and also perhaps, you know, engaging the press as yes. well, yep. um, through interviews yes. and through some publicity that mm. you have done on your social media. Yep. Yes, yeah. I mean that. That's right, and uh, I think for in Savos, we are quite well supported by the uh, corporate communications department. Mm, mm. So public city, it's uh, one way we try to expose, uh, gain more exposure mm. in the market. Mm. Yeah. Then to someone who is, uh, you know, today's market, everybody is talking about residential, 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 yep. and then also office coming in, and yep. then now uh, shop houses become the one of the hot potato. Yes. Um, for someone who is a specialist, let's say in residential, and mm. they want to come on board uh, mm. to understand these shop houses and these even offices, and you have transacted uh, many of these offices mm. in the uh, Shenton area, mm. what kind of advice or what kind of knowledge do, do these agents need to be equipped with? Mm. You need to be a professional, right, mm. to enter these uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. definitely. Uh, I mean, just an advice to the agents out there, right? I think mm. a lot of agents, they were a little bit scared when we when they started doing commercial properties they'll be like oh you know it's not straightforward i, I would rather stick to residential that's where my comfort zone mm, mm, but to be honest mm. i think knowledge is pretty much the same mm. yeah in fact commercial it's uh, really a much more straightforward kind mm. of asset class mm. you know uh, uh in terms of uh sales and purchase and renting out the properties mm. as compared to residential commercial it's quite a hassle-free asset class I would say mm. yeah and uh, there's no additional buyer stamp duty no seller stamp duty mm. and in today's market there are a lot more buyers in the market who are actually willing to put their money in the commercial market mm. Mm. you know it's, it's no longer just the private institutional funds you know mm. it's, it's not only just the companies who want to mm. buy commercial properties mm. a lot of the individuals a lot of the families you know mm. they are looking to park their money in commercial Why? properties Okay, one of the obvious reasons is because there's no EBSD, mm. no SSD, mm. yeah, and that uh, if you talk about the yield return, mm. yeah, commercial generally will yield a better mm. rental return. Even in today's market. To in today's market, yes, if you factor in the EBSD and SSD for mm. residential property, mm. yeah. So whether the buyer is looking to buy for mid to a short to mid term or mid to long term, mm. uh, overall commercial still give you a better mm. return as compared to residential, mm. yeah. And uh, other than that, there's no restrictions in mm. terms of uh, ownership. You mm. know, all foreigners are eligible to buy commercial properties. Mm. Uh, uh, which is why you know in, in in today's market, commercial properties is basically open to all mm. uh, buyers group. You know, mm. as compared to residential, you know, every time you try to sell it to a foreigners, then you have to start factoring. Mm. Mm. You know, the ABSD. Mm. If you want to sell to company, basically, mm. it's almost impossible if mm. you look at the ABSD mm. rate and the LTV ratio. Mm. 
Yeah. Mm. But if you want to sell commercial mm. properties to any mm. type of buyers, let's talk mm. about company, mm. they are all getting the same treatment. Mm. You know, mm. whether is it the BSD rates or the LTV mm. ratio. Mm. Yeah. Just for those in the screen that has no knowledge on uh, mm. commercial property, when you say about uh, the same applies to mm. um, uh, residential yep. and commercial is more or less the same. Mm. Uh, in terms of transaction, mm. uh, the procedure are still the same? Uh, procedure is still the same. Mm. I mean, uh, you know, in terms of issuing OTP, SBA, all these mm. are pretty mm. much the same. Mm. Uh, it's just that uh, I think for commercial, there is a GST component. Mm. There's a mm. goods and service uh, tax component mm. that uh, probably agents out there are not so familiar with. Mm. So uh, most of the commercial properties are subject to GST. Mm. Yeah. So that's why most of the cases, buyer will have to set up a GST registered company mm. to buy a commercial property. Mm. I know that it may sound complicated now, mm, you know, mm, it, it's like mm, maybe different mm, from what I said earlier, mm, but uh, uh, GST issue, you know, I always say there is an expert to take care of it. You know, mm, we are property agent. We mm, are not the tax expert. Mm, you know, if if it's not a company, mm, if it's an individual that wants to yes, buy, yep. then how to go about? Uh, okay, you will have to pay uh, if the seller is a GST registered company mm, and if you're buying under your individual name and mm, if you're not a GST registered person, mm, you will have to pay GST. You are not able to claim it back. Okay. Which is why for 99% of the transactions that we did, mm. uh, the buyers will set up a GST registered company to mm. acquire commercial property. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So setting up a GST registered company is not something very complicated. Mm. You know, we have been working with a lot of tax experts in the market. You mm. know, they are very experienced in terms of mm. helping investors to set mm. up company. Mm. Yeah. So in fact, uh, so far there's only one buyer, mm. you know, in my entire career mm. who refused to set up a company mm. to buy a, a mm. commercial property. Mm. But because the quantum that she was buying was quite small, mm. she only bought a eight hundred thousand mm. dollars office mm. unit. So she's like, okay, last seven percent of eight hundred thousand mm. is not a lot. Yeah. Mm. So that's why she decided not to. Mm. If not, most of the cases, mm. buyers are quite happy to to go and set up a GSC mm. company. So other than this, um, mm. you know, it is not that complicated, you mm. know, to not get into this uh, particular segment. Yes. Um, the way of, you know, getting this customer, if yep. you are new, mm. you know, like what you have just said, I, I believe you have throw more mailers, mm. you know, when, when, when you started, started yeah. Yeah? yeah, but now you're still doing it, but you are more selective, oh, yeah. I guess you are more selective, <laughs> yeah. because you have been very successful now, so you go to the location, mm. you know, you start throwing mailers, mm. you select, so what are the hot districts that you think, mm. you know, in today's Singapore market, such yeah. a small country, you know, no, you know, you ask me honestly, every, ma every mailer probably will cost you 30 cents or a dollar, depending yeah. on how you prepare your mailer, yeah. so there is always you know, a, ca a money cash yes. flow. Yeah. So we have to be very selective. Yeah. So to, to advise the, the young people or those who want to come to mm. start doing this, oh, yeah. so selected area, which area uh. is the hot area when you get all the fishes? Okay. Um, I would say the hottest is still where the main activities are, which is District 1 and 2, the mm. core central region. Mm. That's where most of the supplies of the commercial properties are. Mm. You know? mm. uh, but having said that, I think the, things are getting a little bit more challenging because mm. uh, the, the CCR sellers mm. generally have increased their expectations mm. because uh, I think capital value for commercial properties have also increased mm. quite a fair bit in the mm. past few years. So, and most of the owners of the CCR region, mm. they have very strong holding power. Mm. And you know, they, they are basically sitting on the fence. Mm. They feel that maybe if I wait a little bit more longer, mm. price will increase further. Mm. So a lot of them are not motivated. Mm. Yeah. Which is why in the past few quarters, mm. I've seen a lot more uh, buyers mm. uh, looking at the city fringe area. Mm. Mm. You know, and maybe some of the uh, out of the city fringe area, like East mm. Coast area. Mm. I think these areas are pretty interesting because mm. if you were to look at the price gap, mm. uh, there's still a room mm. to increase for capital appreciation. Mm. Uh, which is why I would say hot district where the main activities are still district one and two, but I see that there's some potential growth mm. in the city fringe area, like mm. district six, seven, mm. uh, uh, district eight, ja eight, Jalan Besar, Lavender area. Mm. If you want to go further, the East Coast area, Juche area is mm. also where you know mm. uh, some of the buyers have started looking around. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I was told uh, yeah. uh, uh, by um, not to reveal name by by your service counterpart. Uh. You know. Uh, you have gotten the uh, Pagoda Street yes. you know, into your portfolio yeah. uh, just yesterday or today. Uh, yeah, I just launched, yeah. And today alone, yeah. you have received more than 
fan yep. inquiries. Yeah, genuine inquiries. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. genuine, very authentic inquiries. Yeah. Where are all these buyers, mm. prospect buyer coming from? Uh. If you mind, you want to review a bit. You know, so that, <laughs> uh. so that the people on the screen that I want to enter to the market, but where to search for the buyer? Uh. You know? Okay. Uh, where, where do this buyer comes from? I think uh, the conventional ways is still advertising. Uh. You know, we today we advertise on Straits Times, mm. B- Business Times, mm. Taobao. Uh, it's uh, quite costly to be honest to mm. advertise on all these three uh, major newspapers. I think, but uh, in terms of the attention, I think we gain the most out of it. Mm. Yeah. Other than that, uh, we also tap into our several international network. Mm. I actually also work with our Hong Kong and mm. uh, China mm. uh, counterparts, mm. uh, ask them to actually post on their website, their WeChat pa- mm. page. Mm. That's where I've also been receiving some uh, inquiries coming from the Hong Kong and China region. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I mean, other than that, as usual, you know, the, the Kubo agents, I've been working with quite a number of agents mm. You know, mm. in the past few mm. years. So they, they, they are like my friends. Every time I have something launched in the market, they will be calling mm. me and say, hey, Hui, I got a very genuine buyer mm. and uh, they know that for my style, I, I'm always happy to share the mm. information, you mm. know, uh, because I believe in, you know, and mm. we should all work together to, to mm. close the deal, you know. Mm. There's no one agent out there that can close mm. all deals by himself mm. or herself, mm. you see. So, yeah, that, that's where all the inquiries mm. came mm. in. Just, yeah. just to the uh, Hutton's agents mm. out there, um, this year, we are working with uh, Savills, uh, our Singapore counterpart, that how we could uh, go about to leverage, leverage on the regional office where we have, um, whether be it commercial or even residential, that we can write on their officers' exposure and network, mm. and how uh, Hui uh, uh, will put Hutton's on an exclusive basis for certain uh, projects that for the Hutton's agents. And this uh, will be reviewed in our portal. Uh, check out with Sean, uh, mm-hmm. our head of training, or ZTEC, our senior director of research. Uh, moving forward very soon, you will see more of this uh, segment exposure in our portal. Hui, there's something that um, i like to ask you. I know, you know, today's market is very fluid. You know, we, we mm-hmm. all being an analyst, you know, we, we, we get the data and we analyze. But what opportunities, you know, that you see coming uh, towards this quarter or mm. even uh, to third quarter or end of this year? Mm. I would say maybe try to look out for more office opportunities, you know, mm. um, because there's always a limited supply of offices in the market. Mm. Uh, rental has definitely picked up. You know, mm. uh, since COVID has ended, mm. and uh, you know, recently government has implemented a new uh, regulations mm. that they actually disallow any further strata subdivision of offices mm. in the CBD and mm. Orchard area. Mm. So um, it actually really limit the supply of strata offices. Mm. You know, especially in the prime area, mm. uh, which is why I think you know the agents out there they should keep an eye out on the mm. office opportunities. So you yeah. think the office will mm. be another class of assets that yes. were. Raw Correct. In Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just to share a bit of the research data, mm. if you look at the stocks of strata offices in Singapore, mm. we only have about thirteen percent of the stocks are strata titled. Mm. The rest of the eighty seven percent of the office stocks are owned mm. by the big boys, you know, it's all single ownership. Mm. You know, mm. the developers own it, mm. the REITs own it, mm. and they are not selling. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So moving forward the stocks of strata office will decrease mm. further because the government have really said that, you know, mm. just two months ago government said they don't allow any strata subdivision anymore. Mm, mm. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you see, we, we, we saw that there are some, um, you know, officers, they always talk about mm. uh, flight to quality. Yes. You know, where, wherever you see new officers come, you mm. see current tenant, you know, yep. will move, you know, to new building. Yeah. And, and be- besides new building now, mm. besides the uh, greens, you know, and all the structure they put in and yep. big floor plate. How do these, all offices building survive. Mm. Yeah. Mm. How do they yeah. survive? <laughs> well, uh, they are still surviving because mm. there's really limited stocks, you see. Mm. Uh, but I would say if you want to compare strata office stocks with uh, those single ownership office stocks, it's mm. not really like an apple to apple comparison mm. because uh, 
definitely the strata office specifications are not as good as the single ownership building. Mm. Yeah, but uh, if you talk about the grid B, grid C kind of strata mm. offices, mm. they are still tenants who prefer to be in the not so good kind of uh, office building because mm. they really want to be in the CBD. Mm. But uh, in terms of the rental, they can't pay for that kind of double digit rental. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so they don't mind going into the slightly older mm. strata office mm. buildings. And uh, you know, it's, it's actually better for some of the old strata office owners because mm. you don't have any direct competition. You know, mm. you are not really mm. competing with the good grade, grade A mm. kind of mm. office buildings. Mm. So definitely the tenants profile are quite different. Mm. If you were to compare grade E, grade B, grade mm. C, whether mm. it's a single ownership strata mm. or office, mm. the, the tenants pool will be quite different. Mm. So uh, I, I wouldn't say that, you know, grade B, grade C, you know, wow, rentability of that is really getting very mm. worse. In fact, I still see that there is certain group of tenants, mm. maybe not really the MNCs, but the mm. SMEs, you mm. know, want to be in CBD, but you know, mm. they are taking the chance. Some of them may be in the industrial area, mm. the not so good areas, city mm. fringe area, mm. like you said, flight to quality. Mm. They are taking the opportunity mm. to come into mm. CBD. Mm. Mm. Am I right to so, say that, you know, the, is there any difference between mm. commercial shop houses transaction mm. and uh, office transaction? Mm. Is there yeah. any difference mm. in the transaction procedure uh, between these two class of uh, assets? No, actually, I differences uh, in, in terms of the sale and yeah. purchase process, mm. pretty much the same. It's still the same. Still the same. Still still the same. same. It's just that uh, for shop house, there's a, a little bit more due diligence to mm. be conducted mm. you know because uh, it's a heritage conservation shop house mm. so buyers sometimes we have to do structural due diligence make sure mm. the structure is safe and sound you mm. know uh, they pro there's probably some survey that need to be done mm. yeah uh, versus strata office buying strata office is like buying an apartment to be mm. honest because mm. it's strata titled there's a management that take care of the property itself mm. so you are buying the strata unit the, the process is more or less the same as buying mm. a, an apartment unit mm. yeah so in today's market um besides uh, shop houses, mm. you foresee that the office space mm. will be the next class of assets that will, that yeah. will fly yes. it up. Yeah. Um, how about residential? Maybe just take you a ah. bit of, may not be your expert <laughs> area. <will. laughs> you know, yeah. How do you see residential ah. then? Well, uh, yeah. because our team, we, we, we do on block yeah. as yes. well. Mm. I think uh, given the past few launches, you mm. know, Leaf at MB, Piccadilly, mm. it's actually a good signal. Mm. And uh, I feel that there is actually robust demand in the residential market. Mm. Yeah, and uh, everyone knows that there is an undersupply of residential mm. currently. Mm. So I will still see that you know, uh, residential is going to, to, to be quite stable mm. in, in the short to mid-term basis. Yeah, but uh, but I'm not the expert. Probably you know mm. you. But you are part of uh, the team that broker uh, the deal in uh, TMC. Uh, eight hundred yes. over million. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and we in your sold to Hoi Hap. Yes, yeah. You know, um, that is in Dunman. Mm. It is eight hundred over million. Mm. So we are talking about, you know, I think probably you build up to about few hundreds or close to a thousand units. Yeah, about, you know, yeah. that is a very big land yes. size, and you are part of the team. Yeah. You know, you, if you look at today Singapore environment, mm. you know, you have the residential, uh, which is still doing very well um, in today's market, despite the uh, cooling measures. Uh, implemented or intervened by the government mm. and then now you have commercial mm. uh, which every now and then we talk about you know we hear commercial transaction here and there yeah. and the prices are going up and it's yet there are still buyers would you in your capacity own capacity mm. foresee that would the government mm. come in to act on shop houses as well well i'm <laughs> keeping my fingers crossed every day that yeah. the government will not intervene. I think, mm. to be honest, I think government wants to keep commercial market pretty much a free play market. You mm. know, Singapore always try to position ourselves as the, mm. you know, Asia financial hub. Mm. Uh, the moment they are going to, you know, impose some cooling measures, uh, that's going to affect a lot of transactions. Mm. You know, uh, the leasing activities will probably be affected mm. as well. Mm. So I don't foresee the government's going to do anything mm. and mm. hopefully it will continue. Mm. Mm. You see, I, yeah. Because in, in our recent uh, data search mm. uh, in Hartons, uh, we saw more and more family uh, mm. officers, officers yeah. set up. Yes. And uh, now the criteria we know, you mm. know have been inch up to 10 million. Yeah. And many of these money of fund uh, mm. went into, you know, shop houses. Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, is that yeah. a trend? Uh, that it, it's definitely a trend now. I mean, uh, a lot mm. of the family officers are looking to buy shop house. 
Mm. I think uh, Shophouse is very unique to most of them because you know it, it's, it's not like a pure office or pure retail kind of thing. Mm. It's actually a hybrid of both. Mm. You know, ground floor, they, you can actually put in F&B, you can put in mm. gym, you know, uh, clinic. Mm. You know, mm. On the ground floor, on the upper floors, you can always apply for some change of use. Mm. You know, it's not just pure office per se. So I think that's why buyers like it because there's a lot more flexibility. Mm. And buying shop house to a lot of foreigners, it's, mm. it's quite precious because you own the land. When mm. you buy shop house, you buy, it comes with the land title. Yes. Yeah, so mm. that's why a lot of the buyers, whether is it local or foreigners, they all mm. love about shop house. Mm. Yeah, and of course, you know, buying shop house is like owning a piece of history. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think that that's something quite unique. Mm. You know. This this short conversation yeah. uh, that uh, I have with Fu Yi now, uh, it's just giving you a flavor mm. uh, on today's market on shop houses and a bit on offices building. Um, in about two to three weeks time, mm. if you want to learn more on how to operate in this environment, uh, Hutton's uh, will have a lecture. Uh, should I call it a lecture? Or will probably have a <laughs> training sessions yeah. that is being uh, headed by Puyi, uh, a two hour sessions, you know, to give you that final points on how to enter into this market and what are the pertinent uh, knowledge that you need to be equipped with and how do you search and find and how do you conduct a uh, constructive conversation with the sellers uh, before they pack this to you. Like what she said earlier, you know, for this uh, Pagoda Street, these two shop houses that came out in the newspaper, there are actually six uh, notable agencies, a big uh, brand, uh, international agency, just like Servius being one of them. They went through a beauty parade. You know, finally they have decided uh, to give this exclusiveness to Hui Yi and her team to market this uh, product. There must be some uh, inner traits of this that you need uh, to be equipped with. Now, that will be uh, said and uh, taught, you know, in her next uh, special class uh, in the next two, three weeks. And for those who are not in Hutton's, uh, if you want to join us, uh, perhaps you go through your Hutton's Associates. Uh, if you have enough vacancy, we welcome you to come on board uh, to hear us out. Last but not least, we, um, you know, we, today, today is Wednesday? Tuesday. Tuesday. Today yeah. is Tuesday. Uh, we all have been working very hard. Yeah. So, uh, Tuesday, what is your daily routine? You know, before I let you go for your next appointment, what, what, what is your daily routine? You, uh. know, you know, that make you you know, for the last 10 years that you, you have been very successful. I mean, I mean, your success comes, perhaps it's the environment that Servius has given you the mm. opportunity. Yeah. But there must be some uh, personality, some traits in you that make you for the last two years. Everybody talk about Hui Yi, Hui Yi nowadays. Mm. So you, you, I'm not revealing your age, <laughs> you know. Uh, she's she's um, very young, yeah. very young if you look at it's, her, yeah. very young. Um, there must be something in you. Mm. And the daily you know, habits. Mm. What's a daily discipline? Daily discipline. Huh? Uh, I would say I start my day quite early. Yeah? Mm. And uh, usually I'll go for the gym. If not, I'll just go for a run. Mm. And then I uh, usually start work about 8 o'clock, mm. 8.30. Mm. And then uh, I will actually use, you know, the first few hours of my day. Mm. Like really try to clear my mind. Think of, you know, what I really want to follow up in, 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 on, on a daily basis. And, uh, you know, I guess constantly reminding myself, you know, to be persistent, try to talk mm. to clients. I mm. think uh, one of the most important traits is uh, always remind yourself that you need to build a long-term rapport mm. or relationship with the client. You know, it's not just about transactional. You mm. know, I think mm. a lot of the clients, they are really very savvy. You know, they mm. are the ultra high number of individuals, their families. Mm. There are a lot of agents that try to talk to them, you know, mm. uh, you know try to knock on their doors. But... Mm. Uh, for me, it's you know uh, sometimes basically just to share some market updates you know mm. with, with clients constantly mm. sharing, mm. make sure that they remember you and make sure you remember your clients as well. Mm. Yeah. Mm. If, yeah. If the client is not yours yeah. today, mm. but if you do follow eventually, up correct. eventually and, yes. and so you spend yeah. ten years, you know you already a, a notable name, so yes. you get all these free referrals. Mm. But your yeah. first few year mm. is. Uh, 
mailers, mailers, yes, mailers, but, and then yeah. to all the agents, yeah. you know, that dinosaur star in searching, you know, mm. through mailers, mailers, and that's what she says, uh, the hot district area, you know, district uh, 15, mm. you know, although the core central area, uh, the prices are going up, but uh, there's still a demand yeah. in this market because I think one of the key factors is the ABSD, you yes. know, you don't need, and then besides family offices are coming. It is something that you should look forward to attend her mm. lessons where she give you an inner depth on how to go about getting things, getting things done in today's uh, commercial market. Mm. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Ma Thanks for having to me today. Yeah, yeah, to have you on board. Yeah, you are a very gorgeous, talented lady. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thank, thank you, you very much. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you. We'll see you in the next lessons. Bye.